This is David Hofmeister's Unwind Your Mind Back to God, read by Tarana Singh. In today's episode, we continue unlearning the world with Book 2. In Chapter 6, this is Section 9, Part 2. Abilities, Work and Purpose, Part 2. There is a little section in Lesson 135 that can help us tease this theme out further. A healed mind does not plan. It carries out the plans that it receives through listening to wisdom that is not its own. It waits until it has been taught what should be done and then proceeds to do it. It does not depend upon itself for anything except its adequacy to fulfill the plans assigned to it. It is secure in certainty that obstacles cannot impede its progress to accomplishment of any goal that serves the greater plan established for the good of everyone. Workbook Lesson 135, Para 11 You can see that we are talking about completely letting go. Friend, that is such a contradiction to what the world is like. David, it is such a contradiction. When I was taking class in urban planning, I had class in problem solving. You define the resources, analyze the factors, and generate all the different approaches. Then you decide which one you want. That is what you get good at. Everyone does it to some degree when it is at the supermarket or with a career of getting or getting our car fixed. Which place has the best price? It is the same kind of thing. Now we are coming to the letting go of all that. Letting go of doing it based on our past experience. Letting go of saying that you know from experience that you can get a product cheaper at store A or that you know from experience if you take a certain class it will take you further ahead than another one. Here is one of the most amazing paragraphs in the whole world. Here is one of the most amazing paragraphs in this whole book. A healed mind is relieved of the belief that it must plan. Although it cannot know the outcome which is best, the means by which it is achieved, nor how to recognize the problem that the plan was made to solve. Workbook, Lesson 135, Para 12 You cannot know what the problem is ahead of time, whether it seems to be your problem or someone else's. He is saying that you cannot recognize ahead of time the problem that the plan is made to solve. We have all been taught that the best outcome is achieved by defining the problem and knowing what goals are best. That is what all of the judgment of the world is based on. You know the good outcomes and the bad outcomes so that you can strive to achieve the good outcomes and avoid the bad ones. He is saying that you cannot know that nor can you know the means by which it is achieved. You have to trust him. The mind engaged in planning for itself is occupied in setting up control of future happenings. Workbook Lesson 135, Para 15 That has been your whole life. 
Look at all of our lives. What kind of life is this if you are not trying to plan for or control future happenings? Friend, that is exactly what I was going through last week. I knew this was a lesson for me. It is something that I deal with all the time in my business and it is time for me to learn that lesson. I do not know how much of it is learned but I do know to quit reacting to things that happen. To recognize that I had an outcome and expectation planned. David And when you trace it back a bit there is the fear of falling behind and being in debt and when you trace that in it gets back to my security security of what in the beginning of this lesson it tells us that it is the body's security we seek to protect to save it from death you can see that when you trace it back you can see that when you trace it back the more we do this the more we see the insanity of constantly defending and protecting the body and working for its betterment there is a heavy investment in that the more we see that it is foolish that it is tightening the grip on our mind the more we begin to let go of it 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 was a great example to take something concrete like that and work it back i appreciate your bringing it up because we need to start like that if we get too much into a theoretical conversation it is not truly meaningful we want to keep it practical and that was a good example when we do that we all get clearer friend i can see that in business this just would not work at all if i told my boss that i did not have a plan or any goals they could not deal with it i was doing some of this when i was in 12 steps but i still had to play the game out game at work do people integrate that or do they leave their jobs david we feel guided by the spirit the shift takes place in the mind and then what takes place on the screen is the witness or the out picturing otherwise it seems like we are trying to put pegs into square holes if we tell jesus that we cannot apply this course at our jobs his answer is come back here into the mind and we will question the beliefs you start to loosen the identification of being a worker or being in the mode of planning outcomes when you begin to step back you will call forth witnesses you begin to have a more expansive concept of yourself in other words jesus is not taking us from this little tiny self concept straight into abstract reality it does not work that way salvation's task is changing concepts Maybe someone sees himself or herself as just a factory worker and then they begin to think this is more than just being a factory worker. It seems like we develop abilities and our concepts start to expand. We seem more fluid and flexible. Really what we are doing is that we are changing concepts in our mind. we are starting to approach the one concept that leads out which is forgiveness forgiveness is an all inclusive concept it is still a concept there is no forgiveness in heaven as there is not anything to be forgiven for 
God does not forgive because he has never con- condemned. It is illusions that need forgiveness. So we take these little steps more and more and more. We are being led towards a concept of a teacher of God or a minister of God, which is a lot different than production manager. Ultimately, we are being led towards a concept of total forgiveness. We had a friend in Cincinnati who was working in a sales job where his manager kept telling him to set sales goals. He kept feeling more and more that there was a conflict and the whole point was to see that the conflict is in the mind. Eventually, it became a very competitive situation where the boss insisted he stick to the goals and accomplish this and that. All the while, he was feeling more and more drawn to meditating and studying the course. In the end, there was a shift of mind and he ended up leaving the position. But leaving does not relieve the conflict. The ego wants you to believe that if you leave one situation and go to a better one, then you will be in good shape. But the whole point is to see that the competition is not in the sales job. The competition is in my mind. The belief in competition is what the problem is. As we continue to move towards what the Course is talking about, things get taken care of. You may start to move away from the work ethic and the five or ten year plan. You may open to the Holy Spirit and trust that it will work out. But you will not get it in writing from Him. (laughs) This is what you will be doing next year as part of phase one of the plan. (laughs) It is not like that. It is about taking the step for today, for right now. In the beginning, I needed experiences that let me know I was going to be provided for. There were many synchronistic movements. I was guided to a garage sale and got a car for a hundred dollars. I was guided there and my other car broke down in front of the garage sale and had to be towed away. It was so synchronistic. I could not have planned that in a million years. It was obviously handoff time. I needed that. That was the Holy Spirit going before me, saying, You are going to be okay. This seems scary, but you are okay. There can be a temptation to get stuck in this kind of manifesting. You hear in some circles, I manifested myself a job. I manifested myself a new mate. Just the way I wanted. (laughs) The Course is saying that you have a powerful mind. So why not use it for peace of mind? To wake up and be totally free. Do not rest in bringing about certain outcomes. Do not pray for the effect. Ask to be shown a different way of looking at the world. There is a natural progression towards that. As we traveled, we had so many synchronistic experiences where things would seem to show up just as we needed them. You could write a whole book on that. It makes for good reading because it is exciting and fun even magical in a way. But after a while, you just become completely focused on your purpose and convinced that you will be provided for. The fear level goes down and then the whole focus is just on seeing the world differently. 
on seeing the ego belief system and getting to the bottom of it. End of section.